biohacking is very much encompassing of everything like lifestyle, supplements, fitness, sleep, nutrition, ev everything like that in order to be the best version of you. And so that is kind of how I found biohacking. And I was like, oh, this makes sense. Like, let's take a holistic perspective on our, on us and on our health in order to be healthy and not just, hey, here, eat this one thing and here's a meal plan and now you're going to be healthy. It's like, no, that's actually not enough like to get you to where you want to be. Hey guys, have you heard about the latest trend in self-care? It's called biohacking and it's all about making small lifestyle changes to improve your overall health. From getting better sleep to reducing your exposure to toxins, there are so many ways to biohack your way to a healthier you. And that's where our guest today comes in. As a registered holistic nutritionist, she's an expert in all things health and wellness. Whether you're interested in nutrient-dense foods or healthy lifestyle habits, she has us covered. Welcome to the show, Biohacking Brittany, a.k.a. Brittany Ford. Amazing. Thank you so much, Mike. I am so excited to be here. Brittany, I'm excited to have you. I've been getting your emails, just so you know, and I want to commend oh. you on your awesome emails. They're, they're really well written, crafted, and you do an awesome job with branding. I think a lot of times people get started and they just they just go into it, which you've done, but you've also been like, Dotting your I's and crossing your T's and your branding looks amazing. So I wanted to commend you on that. Thank you. That means a lot. Those emails actually require a lot of work. So I'm glad that someone is seeing them. Oh, I know. No, I do a simple email every week and that takes work and it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. So you yeah. put a lot of love into yours. Again, guys, we have Biohacking Brittany here. Her website, her podcast, her social media, everything's linked in the show notes. So don't worry about spelling it or uh, you know where to find it or typing it in. It's all clickable right there in the show notes. So what I want you to do, I know you told this story probably 3,000 times, but our audience may be new to hearing your story. And there's a lot of people who are entrepreneurial in their journey and they're, you know, maybe they're in a moment like me. I admitted to this off camera that, you know, I haven't made some great lifestyle changes. My sleep, at, once I became an entrepreneur, my sleep has gone nosedive. And it's self-inflicted and putting the wrong food in our bodies because we're doing drive through because we're meeting with a dozen clients in a day and trying to make it happen. So there's a lot of people tuning in right now who may be familiar with biohacking and also your story. So I think that's a great starting place. Share your story, your health journey, and what inspired you to take on this whole path of biohacking your health and wellness? Yeah, absolutely. I can relate to a lot of what you said about being an <laughs> entrepreneur, that's for sure. So I had health issues when I was a teenager and I really didn't know where to turn at that point. I had a bunch of symptoms that didn't really make sense for someone who was 16. Um, like I was losing my hair. I couldn't focus in school. Um, I had like weird skin flare ups, just a bunch of things that didn't really make sense. And I went to my traditional doctor and she was basically like, nothing's wrong with you. They ran blood work and it was like, go home, you're fine. But I didn't feel good and I didn't look good, you know, for what I wanted to, I guess, at the time. And so I really struggled with kind of finding answers. And I went down this path of thinking, okay, maybe I need to look at healing in more of a natural way. Maybe I need to look at this idea of wellness. And this was pre mega wellness era that we're in now. Um, and so I went to a naturopathic doctor who was close by and she really opened up my eyes to this idea of healing through food and self-care and movement and sleep and these different things like that. And I had no idea about any of that. And through working with her, I did a bunch of different tests and realized that I had a lot of gut issues, a lot of inflammation, and we can get specific about that. Mm -hmm. And then it actually took a while, like healing my gut took about two to three years but once I did that, I was actually able to heal all of the symptoms that I was dealing with and feel better. And it was a complete 360 transformation that I made of my life from like, I don't know, 16 to 19-ish. Wow. I'm yeah. going to jump in right there because yeah. I, I know, and I've been told this, I've also had a lot of gut issues myself. So part of having you on the show, I'm going to admit, is a little bit of getting some information from you to help myself. 
And obviously yeah. I know that that can help others. So, um, but yeah, I've had a lot of issues, just digestion, uh, whether it's gluten doesn't seem to do that, you know, seems to throw me off cheese, dairy. Um, I've also went into a, a vegan diet at one point and then I wasn't, you know, there's a whole side story to that, but leaky guts actually something that I thought I potentially had. Um, and also when I was, you know, working, it was before entrepreneurship, um, I was working as an insurance agent and I was doing a lot of travel, you know, with clients and stuff. And I was doing, like I said, eating fast food and all the wrong stuff. And I also had at that point, um, an issue with my liver. I was, you know, my liver wasn't looking good when I did light, um, blood work for life insurance. So I was super surprised by that. So the reason I wanted to pause you is one thing I've heard over and over and over again is health starts in our gut. And that's really what, where your journey started was with your gut, leaky gut and healing that. So what are some ways, some let's call them basics um, of biohacking our diet and starting with the gut? Oh, such a good question. Yeah, the gut is, uh, is a lot of people are focusing on it now, but it took us a long time to really understand its importance. And if you look at it from a broad perspective, obviously it makes sense that the gut is so important because it is what digests and absorbs our food. So if we're not digesting our food properly or even our supplements or our nutrients in general, how can the rest of our body be healthy? How can our liver function correctly? How can we have great skin? How can our hair do what it needs to do? How can our hormones be balanced if there's so much um, you know, mishap and error and you know, inflammation happening at a gut level? So it's great that we're focusing on it now, I think whenever people ask me, how can I hack my gut? I think the best place to start is by getting tested. And so now we're at a point where there's so many at home gut health tests that we can do that get shipped to your door. Typically it's a stool test and it looks for bacteria, viruses, parasites, um, and a bu bunch of different other biomarkers that can really help you understand what is happening to your gut. So mm -hmm. that is pivotal because once we have data on what's actually going on, then we can say, okay, you should be avoiding gluten or you should be drinking aloe vera juice to heal your gut if you have leaky gut, right? So I think that is the jumping off point for so many people is like, let's get data on your gut and then let's make more informed decisions from there. So really anybody, whether they're having gut issues, digestion issues, like yeah. let's look at the gut, let's get that evaluated. And then we could, that's really the launching point, which is awesome. And then after you do that, what are some common things that help with inflammation? I know turmeric is really good. I have that in my, um, you should see it. You'd think I'm like 95 years old. My <laughs> kitchen table has like different supplements on it, you know, turmeric all the way to zinc, you know, and there's like seven yeah. or eight in between. Um, so I've definitely done some research and T's, um, podcast. I'm going to give her some love real quick. Green living with T, uh, T Fortin Barnes is actually who connected us because I was producing her show with my team and that's how I found out about you. So what are some, some basics like, um, for inflammation and things that can help the gut? Yeah. So I think after you've done that test and maybe you identify that you do have leaky gut or you do have inflammation going on, I think turmeric like you said is a great one i think appropriate uh and efficient omegas is a really good one omega-3s are really powerful anti-inflammatories um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a supplement with that one like you can just eat more seafood one or yeah. two times a week but the thing is a lot of us aren't actually eating that much seafood anymore so it's kind of why this idea of like supplementation in general has become so popular is like right. our diets are kind of crappy now yeah yeah fatty amino acids right or omega-3 yeah fish oil um that's really great advice right there now this is i feel like i know the answer but i want to ask it to get a little bit more like deeper analysis from you um get nutri nutrients from food is obviously better than a supplement that's like end of story correct yeah but there may yeah, be I mean, there may be some things that people can't eat the food because they maybe it makes them sick, but the they can get the nutrient. Is that right? Like, or they have a problem with the texture of the food. I know my daughter, who's eight years old, has a lot of food texture issues, so she'll get it through vitamins, right? Yeah. So when we look at specific nutrients, like say like vitamin A, and we say, okay, this is the amount of vitamin A the average male at this age should be taking. 
uh, given his lifestyle. So it's very specific to the person. If we look at something like carrots that has vitamin A in it, like you can say, oh, this carrot has this percentage of vitamin A in it. Okay, that's great. But we're at a point now where our food is so depleted of nutrients compared to what it was 30 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, that the amount of carrots that you would need to eat every single day to get that recommended amount of vitamin A is absurd. And right. it's just not realistic. And yeah, so like that's 72 why. carrots would be the daily recommended amount. I always exactly. notice that on the bottle, you're looking and it's like 252% of your daily value. And I'm like, do I yeah. need 252%? But um, why is that? Why why is that yeah. though, Brittany? Why why the heck? I, I mean, I know there's a lot of scientists getting their fingers in in our food, um, but aside from that, is it does does nature get depleted over time when it keeps repopulating, or no? Is that should yeah. a carrot be just as healthy a hundred years later if humans didn't get their hands involved? I mean, ideally. Ideally, yeah. Like ideally, we would be eating the same nutrient dense foods today as we were 100 years ago. But our soil isn't once what it was and our farming practices aren't once what they were. So now you see a lot of monocropping, right? So this farm produces carrots and that's all they produce. Whereas back 100 years ago, it was rotated. So that soil actually had way more nutrients in it, way more minerals, vitamins, enzymes, everything needed in it to create very healthy, robust, and uh, nutrient-dense produce. But now with monocropping, we just don't really see that anymore. Um, we also are dealing with a much larger population size. So, you know, the demand for that bag of carrots is significantly more than it was 100 years ago. And mm -hmm. that's why it's like these farms are pressed to make and produce a certain amount of carrots every year, where it just wasn't, look, wasn't like that. So I think... It's a socioeconomic, multifaceted issue, and I don't think that there's like an easy band-aid fix for it at this point, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but I think at the individual level, there are things that we can do, right? So we can buy like organic produce if it's accessible to us and if it's affordable to us, which is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. And then we can supplement with, you know, bioactive forms of different ingredients and supplements to just try to round out the amount of nutrients we're getting in a day but honestly it's a lot for the average person to kind of navigate and figure this out the good news is we live in a day and age when you know touch of a button you can get this information now there's a lot to sort through and i recommend that people do go to your your podcast which is biohacking Brittany, right yeah and that's a great resource and tool your website um you're also a coach so if somebody is looking for one-on-one -on -one, is that available currently yeah. So currently I have paused seeing clients right now, but I'll probably start again in the new year um, with a focus on female health specifically. So okay. the women out there who are struggling with hormone imbalances, infertility, mm -hmm. uh, even like mental health issues specific to women. And, and there's a lot, there's, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. Well, it's right important now. in business to, to always, you know, pinpoint who you're going to, who your avatar is and yeah, men, women of all ages. I mean, you, you, that would be just a, a client book size. That's too big for you to, you know, I mean, you can <laughs> obviously have other yeah. people on your team to manage it, but you want to be specific about who you're helping. Right. And, um, so, you know, that makes sense. I wanted to make sure that you, I, I paused you in your story because I wanted to talk about how you healed your gut and how gut is the center of really the beginning of all of this. Um, but you did have more to your story. So I want to go back there and have you mm -hmm. uh, continue to share what happened when you were 19, obviously. I don't know how old you are now, but, um, you know, you continued on and this really became part of your really everyday life into entrepreneurship. Yeah. Yeah. So I went on to study in university. I studied public health and public relations and was like leading somewhat of a healthy lifestyle at that point. Um, came out, went into the corporate world, and I ended up just actually going back to school to study holistic nutrition because I just had so much passion for leading a healthy lifestyle that I was like, okay, I want to start getting more education and understanding things more and be able to help people. And it was after I became a nutritionist that I realized as much as I love nutrition and I think it's such a pivotal pillar in being healthy for anybody 
I don't think it's necessarily the end all be all in order to lead an optimally healthy life. And that's kind of how I found biohacking is biohacking is very much encompassing of everything like lifestyle, supplements, fitness, sleep, nutrition, everything like that in order to be the best version of you. And so that is kind of how I found biohacking. And I was like, oh, this makes sense. Like, let's take a holistic perspective on our on us and on our health in order to be healthy and not just, hey, here, eat this one thing and here's a meal plan and now you're going to be healthy. It's like, no, that's actually not enough Like to mm-hmm. get you to where you want to be. Can you define then biohacking a little bit more yeah. in detail? Because obviously we talked about health and nutrition and that could be more of a straightforward conversation. But biohacking is a, it's an actual term. It's an actual study. Um, and it's a, it's putting a different lens on how everything is looked at. So, and, and I know you, yeah. you, you do that through food and also do that in your home. There's ways to biohack your home. We'll talk about that in a moment, yeah. but talk about what biohacking means in, in more detail. Yeah. So people define it differently. I define it as holistic self-care for optimal health. And that's kind of like just what I said was, Holistic self-care is let's look at all of these different things that make you you, like even stress management. We can biohack stress, right? Like mm-hmm. like in our environment and our home and being an entrepreneur and our performance, like our brain performance is such a big thing in biohacking right now uh, and longevity as well. And then for optimal health is how do we get you to be the healthiest version of you? And it doesn't mean perfect health. It doesn't mean you be a 10 out of 10 every single day. It's yeah. just like, how do we level you up and kind of keep you in that eight to 10 range daily, ideally? The word that comes to mind is optimal, right? Like, yeah. so you're performing optimally, just like our cars or any appliance we have, we always treat them the right way. They last longer. And then people, I'm saying people, but I'll include myself. Um, we don't always take care of ourselves the best we can. It's like, why? Why do we put ourselves to last a lot? So, um, and, and something else I, I know that um, you you obviously work a lot with women and a lot of the topics you cover on your podcast and on the shows that you've been on is um, women's health. And it's much different than men's health because I feel like we're a little bit more simple and women's bodies have a lot more changes throughout the month. Can you talk about um, our, our audience is really split. I always look at the analytics. It's like pretty much 50, 50. So there are a lot of women tuning in right now. And this is good for the men to know about their partners too. But um, how is it, you know, if you're biohacking for, for women, how is it really different for men? I mean, you can take it however you want and kind of enlighten us a little bit with that, too. Yeah, this has been a big discussion this year. Um, the biohacking world in the beginning was led by men. And uh, you probably know some of them, Dave Asprey, Ben Greenfield, mm-hmm. uh, all of these people. And the approach in the beginning of biohacking was very... Uh, I don't want to say aggressive, but it's very performance driven, right? So let me be the best. Let me fire from all cylinders at all times. And like just this mode of go, go, go. And that masculine energy doesn't really jive well with women long-term. So obviously we can like step into that. There's different times in our menstrual cycles where maybe we feel more like that, but biohacking for women really needs to be you have to approach it from a standpoint that really looks at women's hormones and understands that day to day, we are not the same. So, Mm. you know, typically women has, you know, 28 day, 30 day cycle, one week to the next, she's not the same. Her mental Mm. health, her body, her hormones are not the same. So how can I say, Hey, do these same biohacks every single day in order to reach optimal performance at work when like one week to the next, she's different. So that's what we need to think about is like, how can we, how can we support women week to week in a way that is actually in tune and in sync with her body? Um, And I was just a part of the women's biohacking conference about a month ago, and we talked a lot about this. So biohacking in general is changing to be more inclusive of women, which is really exciting, but we're definitely not fully at that level where it's like 50, 50 yet. That's interesting to me. I mean, I, I wouldn't think it would be behind. I thought it would be equal or even front running, you know, because oh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just this is just a gut, no pun intended reaction. But um, 
that I feel like women are a little bit more in tune with their health typically because they have a little bit more that they're keeping track of and everything that, that, but that's just like super general. I shouldn't even say that because that's generalizing and it's just, there's no research to back that up. It's just a thought. Um, but that's interesting. I'm glad you mentioned that because you're saying, Hey, look, there's some room for growth here. There's where we need to be and where we're at and we're getting there, but it's good to acknowledge that and know what your target is. And obviously you're a little bit more um, female focused, which is great because you're helping that curve. Um, And I want you to talk about too. So how can women, you know, more in tune with themselves? Is it, is it journaling? Is it, how can they keep better track? So they know, Hey, at this point in time, these foods would be better or these activities would be better. How do they really uh, keep a good track of that? Yeah. Great question. Um, So there is a, you know, trend right now, I guess, called cycle syncing. And I actually have a digital guide created for this very thing. Uh, Here's what I would recommend. And here's what the research says about what to do during the different phases of your cycle, whether it's exercise or lifestyle or supplements or eating. Uh, There are different foods and different things that would do better during, during the different phases. And that's, again, because our hormones are so different. I think kind of incorporating one or two of those factors can be helpful, but I also don't want women to get so swept up in the minutia of it that it becomes stressful. Mm -hmm. So I think like, for example, like, and I'm sure you've seen this, you know, like with the women in your life, uh, when women are on their period, like that's not the time to be going to spin class or doing a hit workout or giving a big presentation at work, ideally, or sure. pitch, pitching new brands, whatever it is, right? right. Like that's the time to slow down and mm-hmm. spend more time stretching and in yoga and maybe hot baths and like being in that feminine energy. But then when women are ovulating, that is the time when you typically perform best in your workouts. You can lift the heaviest. You can nail an interview, whatever it might be, because you have that that surge in hormones happening at that time. So yeah, yeah, there's different things going on that you can learn about. It's really, and I'll tell you, man, the women are incredible. <laughs> they are incredible. <laughs> and I'm glad I'm a dude because, you know, like I said, I have a daughter and I was in the room, you know, when she was born and I was married Aww. for six years before I was divorced and everything. Um, and yeah, I, w- you know, women are incredible. I'll just say that they're definitely stronger than men in many ways. Um, yeah. But uh, the, the world would not, it could not be what it is without a uh, woman. Uh, that's for uh, damn, damn sure. So um, I just want to want to say something too. Um, we talked about just in, in general, a monthly cycle, but also I thought about pregnancy. There's got to be a lot of different indicators and things to, to identify there. Do you have um, episodes in particular or content either on your website for women that are going through pregnancy that could tune into this? Yeah, absolutely. So I <laughs> I have a lot of women reach out about biohacking pregnancy. And it's interesting because it's such a new idea. So yeah. I, I, on Google, like I come up like on the top searches for it because I have podcast episodes about it. And now I'm in this like preconception stage in my life. So I'm going through a preconception cleanse right now. So is my husband. And I've been creating a lot of content about that, about how do you prep your body before you even start to try and why it matters for men to be super healthy before you start to try in terms of healthy sperm production and things like that. So that's kind of where my content is right now. And then I'm sure Mm -hmm. when I get pregnant, it will be more, you know, biohacking and here's what to do. But I I definitely do have women reach out in my DMs on Instagram asking, and I give some recommendations that I can, uh, specific to their needs, I guess. Yeah. At least you can point them in the right direction. And when they yeah. need that information, it's available. Um, something I wanted to cover too, before we take a quick break, biohacking our home. I know you mm-hmm. talked about this on T's podcast and my ears perked up because I know there's, um, is it ENT? What, what are the initials or the abbreviation? EMT? EMF? EMF. Thank you. Yeah. EMF. So it's basically like our electronics that are all around our house, our devices. Most people myself included, need to change where things are located, like our cell phones tucked under our pillow or on the nightstand. Talk about that and how important, um, 
you know, all of our devices are. And I know personally, I use a laptop desk now. I do want to get a standing desk nice. like you have, because then, you, you know, I'm at least standing and using my full body. But um, a lot of times I move around different places. I work from home. So I'll be in one room one day, one room the next day, podcast studio the next day. And I use a portable desk. Um, I think that helps a little bit with some of that radiation and stuff. But yeah. I do wonder if, you know, it's so close to, you know, our our private parts, if you will, that it's like, uh, is that doing anything down there? And you mentioned it on T-Show. So can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, there's a lot of talk about this right now and a lot of research about it. EMF stands for electromagnetic fields. And everything that is electronic gives off some sort of EMF field. Mm -hmm. And so the more online we become, the more homes become smart homes now that they're called you have to not, you have to be cough, like careful. Oh my gosh, can't speak. You have to be careful that the more we plug in, like we have to take this into account on how this is affecting our health. Mm -hmm. And what can we do to mitigate the potential negative effects of it short term and long term? So there are EMF radiation, you know, strategies at, that we can employ to block EMF. So you get blankets, you get clothes that are typically made out of like silver that will actually just block the frequency from going through. Like I have some of that. That's really cool. But you can also just do simple things of like turning your Wi-Fi off at night to reduce the amount of exposure you get at night when you're sleeping. Like why does it have to be on anyway? Right. Um, not having your laptop on your lap, not having your phone in your pocket. So distance is a big thing. The further away you are from anything that's plugged in, the less EMF that you are getting from it. So not working right on your lap, but putting your laptop on a desk and sitting in a chair and kind of having some distance, I think is a good idea as well. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of things. And yeah, with your sperm like production to get into it, like there's, yeah, there's quite a bit of research on the negative side effects of EMF on sperm uh, mutations and motility and sperm count. Yeah. Well, I'm super concerned because I've been using the laptop desk for like a few years now. And it's like, uh, I yeah. got to change it. I got to get back to a regular desk. And that'd be help helpful to my posture and everything else that they've, you know, I've had people um, telling me about too. So really good information there. Biohacking our homes, biohacking our health. Um you know, everything starts in the gut. So that was right there. I mean, our first half hour, a lot of great information. Hey guys, I recently discovered Magic Mind and I love it so much that I have to share it with you. The first thing I do every day before I start working is take this productivity shot. It has adaptogens in it, nootropics in it, matcha green tea, which I already love. This stuff right here keeps me dialed in, focused. I absolutely love it. Whenever I go on a road trip, I always make sure I have Magic Mind right before I leave, keeps me focused on the road. To me, I don't even consider it necessarily an energy drink. It's more of a focus drink, right? You wanna get more done in a day. You wanna be focused on the things that are important to you. You don't wanna be jittery. You don't wanna be going crazy and all over the place, scatterbrained. This stuff has me locked into a flow state like I've never been before. Kind of feels like a pro athlete in the fourth quarter. Game on the line, everything starts to slow down and it's their time to make a game-winning shot, that's what this is. Magic Mind Productivity Shot right here. It is, uh, it'll boost your energy and focus, crush procrastination, do more, stress less. If you guys are ready to try it out for yourself and see what you think, go to the link in the description for Magic Mind and use my promo code. It's MikeDup20 and you'll save 20% off. Again, MikeDup20 to save 20% off. All right, let's get back to the show. All right, we're back in action with Biohacking Brittany. And remember, you can connect with her on social media, her website, her podcast. I have everything linked for you in the show notes, clickable. And uh, before the break, we were talking about a lot of great things. So we're talking about our gut health. We're talking about biohacking our health through food, through the electronics in our home, things we can eliminate. Um, and there's, you know, a lot of people tuning in, as I mentioned, that are entrepreneurs, you know, that are just running in different directions. And if you're not an entrepreneur, you might be someone tuning in that's a, an athlete that's looking to level up. Because the whole idea here is to level up to that, you know, that next spot in your, where you're looking to go. And having people like yourself on, Brittany, is helping our audience get there. 
taking these little things and saying, how can I apply this to my own life? So what I'd love you to do is talk about, you know, there's a lot of things that entrepreneurs kind of end up putting to the to the side, myself included. We talked about health already. We talked a little bit about food. Part of health is our quality of sleep, something I do, I do not get enough of. And admittingly, last night, I did not get enough sleep. So hopefully, I'm putting this thing together well enough uh, for people to comprehend. Um, and I appreciate your patience. But yeah, talk about the quality or, or sleep and like how quality sleep is not just something that's an afterthought. It needs to really be like the primal thing that we focus on first. Yeah. Yeah. I thank you for sharing. I think that sleep is, I think it's still underrated by most people. Um, we sleep about a third of our life. Yeah. So that's a significant amount. Do so the math. Should... Eight hours, 24 hours in a day. It is literally a third. Yeah. And, and I, like I think that sounds kind of depressing when you think about it. Like oh, I'm just laying, <laughs> like a third of my life is just thrown away. But it's like, we wouldn't use our phones and not plug it in a third of the day because we do. We all do because yeah. we need yeah. to use it. We need it to work. If our bodies need to work, it needs to recharge. Same yeah, idea. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. The third of the life of your life that you are taking to sleep allows you to show up better for the other two thirds. Right. Amen. And like you today, like when you don't get that third that is optimized, then you're feeling like you're dragging your feet through the mud, you're drinking more coffee, you're making these decisions maybe you wouldn't have made. So I, th I think it's, yeah, I think it's underrated. And I think there's a lot we can do to really optimize our sleep. And it really starts with creating a healthy bedtime routine. So it looks different, I guess, for everybody, like specific time-wise, but winding down, you know, an hour, 45 minutes before you actually go to sleep, turning your phone off at a reasonable time, you know, not scrolling through TikTok and then like turning the lights off and trying to fall asleep right away. Like when we're exposed, when we are exposed to so much blue light, we are suppressing the melatonin in our bodies and our melatonin is like the key sleep hormone that we need. So right. if you think about scrolling on your phone, you're just getting bombarded with blue light. How are you supposed to fall asleep? right away afterwards. Not to mention bombarded with like, bullshit. Let's call it what it yeah. is. Like, I mean, we're scrolling social. How often is there something that's enlightening to you that's going to make you a better human being that next morning you wake up? It's, it's typically, it's not. I do the same thing. I'm big into sports and it's usually sports updates, injury, health. Like, is that, is that player out for the year? I got to, I got to, dude, just check it in the morning when you have breakfast. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. it's going to be there for you. And, but I, I do know, I, I go through the cycle too. It's like milking the day, basically getting the most out of it. I don't want to go to bed yet. There's yeah. more, there's more. And it's like, there ain't more that's yeah. going to benefit your, the rest of your life. Like yeah. start over tomorrow, get your full sleep. Like you said, um, the blue light, I do use the blue light blockers. I was using them at the top of the yeah. show. Um, they definitely help. I notice from an eye strain and stress standpoint, I can literally sit in front of my computer like 10 or 12 hours and function when I don't wear them. Now I can barely get a half hour. Damn. Which wow. is probably bad because now I'm like dependent yeah. on them. But it does yeah. go to show that eye fatigue is a real thing with blue light. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, sleep, you know, you may not know this, probably don't. But I used to work at Sleep Number. I was a store manager and I was a sales rep for a couple of years. And I used to literally, my product was quality sleep. It wasn't the bed. It wasn't the mattress. It wasn't the pillows. It wasn't the sheets. It was, they were purchasing quality sleep. And not even that. That's kind of the, you know, what, what they were purchasing as far as like a benefit. But the real benefit was that the two thirds of their life that they're awake would be way more enhanced, right? Performance whether they're athletes or working or whatever it might be, doing a speech, student, getting better grades. Um, and it's funny because I was really pushing for like the NFL to, to do a partnership with Sleep Number when I worked there. And a lot of people rolled their eyes at me and now they actually have a partnership with the NFL. Hey, wow. Somebody had a good <laughs> idea 12 years ago that I'm not collecting on. But no, um, I, I am actually happy to see that because – you know, it's more awareness on sleep and it's a great product. I actually do sleep on a sleep number bed. No, maybe they can become a sponsor someday. I'll reach out to them. But it's so true. And I feel ridiculous saying that because, Brittany, you and I, again, off camera, we're joking. 
Like, I did not, I haven't been sleeping well as an entrepreneur and um, it's a bad excuse. Working hard doesn't mean that you're going to get further ahead all the time if you're killing yourself. So like what, what, what are some of the like a quality night's sleep? What are some of the things that are happening in our body that's, that we're actually getting the benefits of? Can you explain that a little bit better than just telling people, get your seven and a half hours? Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a lot to what you said. And I think, I think so many entrepreneurs feel that like just to touch on, you know, I want to get the most out of my day and, oh, it's only 7 PM. I could work another X amount of hours or whatever mm -hmm. it might be. But I think that again, like getting back to this point of we need rest, the brain needs rest. So when we're sleeping, the brain is essentially people use different analogies, but essentially it's washed, it's mm -hmm. cleaned out and you're allowing it to actually function better you're giving it the opportunity to use the different parts of it so that during the day it can light up in the way that it's supposed to and i i can't stress that enough i i don't know i've been there where i have woken up at this happened to me a couple of weeks ago i woke up at i think it was like 2 30 in the morning i go to bed really early so i go to bed at like 9 9 30 i woke up at 2 30 and i was like oh I should just like get up and start working for the day. Like wow. it's a brand new day. I might as well yeah. get up. I might as well just like make the most of my day. So that's like the coin that I'm on, the side of the coin that I'm on. Some people are like, I'm not going to go to bed until 1 a.m. until this project's done. And then I'm going to sleep until 8. But for mm -hmm. me, it's the other way around where I'm like an early bird. I'll wake up. I'll have that cortisol and blood sugar spike at that time, which wakes yeah. me up. And then I get up and that's not great either. Um, honestly, I think the way you're doing it is the right way. And I, and I want to say something real quick is like right or wrong. Everybody has what's going to work for them. Some people, their job means that they're working overnight shifts. So if you're listening to this and you do need to work later, so that doesn't work for your sleep schedule, everybody has what works for them, their family, maybe, maybe a husband and wife are both night owls. I'm a little bit of a night owl. I do get like weird creative at night, like night. You're saying you're in bed at nine o'clock. I'm starting looking at my thing. I go, I got five more hours in me right now at wow. nine o'clock. I say that just about every night and it's, it's bad. But then, yeah, eight o'clock the next morning, I am like a shell of myself as far as creativity goes because I'm a zombie. So what, what I think for me, just speaking to you as a friend and anyone that's a fly in the wall right now listening, um, you know, go to bed early, like you said, it's going to be hard for me to do that, but eventually I can get that into my routine. And then I could wake up at seven or eight fresh and I could start working before the rest of the people, you know, that I'm emailing are, they're not going to see my email for a couple hours, but I can zap out some emails at seven. I could go for my walk. I could do a little bit of a light workout, whatever it looks like, have my, you know, cup of coffee if I'm even doing that anymore, because eventually you can wean that off if you're getting natural um, energy, right? So it just makes sense to me to start the day like that, super energized, and then Really, after nine o'clock, business should be wrapped up for the day. I, I I don't know. Like, I've had people email me, text me, and I I respond to them at all hours of the day. And I know that that sets a bad. That's a whole nother conversation. But just to say it is the reality of life. As an entrepreneur, we always want to be like, boom, we got this, we got you. But it's also not healthy. And if if someone you're working with expects you to email them back at eleven o'clock. And it's not some random, like the whole world's going to end tomorrow if you don't, then that's probably not the right person for you to be working with. Like your health needs to be the priority for yourself, your family, and your clients will actually get better work from you if you're healthier. So I'm like preaching at you and you're on my show, like here to teach me things. No, so I'm, I'm just preaching. I'm just preaching to myself right now. And anybody who's interested in listening, thank you for being here at the end. Um, entrepreneurs, though, that are tuning in, I, you obviously took this 16 years old. You had your kind of, Hey, I need to do some stuff differently. Like what I'm hearing from the old school doctors that are reading things in a book, uh, you know, yeah. that's basically a paperweight on their desk right now. Um, are telling me things that just seem a little bit outdated. You did your research, you learned what it was 19 years old. It really, you were on your trajectory into doing this professionally at that point. Um, but there's entrepreneurs that are tuning in. We want to talk about the business side of things. You talked yeah. about your emails. I, I mentioned you do a great job with it. 
So anyone that's tuning in right now, maybe they're losing their passion a little bit because their health is starting to um, disintegrate is maybe a dramatic word, but like their, their health is being stressed out. Their sleep schedule is stressed out. Their life is stressed out. And now they're losing their passion for the thing that they did, that they, it's their calling in the world. God and I, I believe in God, but God and the universe collectively putting someone in that position to be the greatest at it. And now they're not able to because they're doing this stuff. So what would you, what, what advice would you have for somebody in that situation? Yeah, I think I've been. No pressure, there. no pressure. By the way, <laughs> no, um, I've been there and it's a really sticky spot to be in because you feel like you're already juggling so much to add in a full health and wellness routine on top of that. You're kind of like, I don't have anything left in me. I don't have any energy left in me to be able to do that. So for me, I was just reflecting on this last week. I took a week off and I was reflecting on how do I bring more balance into my life as an entrepreneur, as a busy person who doesn't have a full team, who only has contractors, who, you know, like doesn't matter, I guess, like necessarily the scale of your business at that point. But when the boundaries become so blurred between you and your business, that is when we have a problem. And that is when stress continues and you eventually hit burnout, right? And then burnout is very hard to claw your way out of. So it's easier to do things now, little micro habits every single day to be healthier than to pull yourself out of burnout in six months or 12 months from now when mm. you're mentally drained, physically drained, you're not sleeping, whatever might be going on. So I think boundaries are a big thing. And I think that looks different for everybody. So for me personally, like I went through a period of working every single weekend mm -hmm. and the COVID didn't help with that because I worked from home and there was no, there's nothing to do. No off so why, switch. So why would I not work today? Yeah. There's yeah. no events. There's no friends to see that I'm not traveling. So why would I not work? And that repeated pattern of, let's say that was happened for a year and a half, two years, whatever it was, coming out of COVID and the pandemic, I had to really learn to like have a life again outside of online, outside of my business. And that was really hard. And I think a lot of people have gone through that too. So setting boundaries. Yeah. I have myself big time. Yeah. Yeah. Setting boundaries. Even right now, I'm like, okay, I'm not working this weekend. Mm -hmm. I'm working, you know, and it's funny with entrepreneurs. You have to little, literally schedule. Like I, I, I'm a nerd with this too. I'll schedule. Like yeah. if my family's going to the movie, I'll put it in my calendar. Like three o'clock on yeah. Saturday, not doing anything, but being with yeah. my family. We're going to the pumpkin patch. Cute. We're, that that's in there, you know, like, or yeah. my daughter is on my calendar every day, phone call. And then the weekends I have her, she's literally blocked into my yeah. calendar. And, um, yeah. I think that's what we need to do. Otherwise, it's too easy to just fill it in with busy work. Yeah. So I think boundaries is the the thing I was thinking about last week. Um, relaxation. So like, what can you bring in that relaxes you? And it doesn't, you don't necessarily have to frame it as health or biohacking or wellness. Like it could be like you go and play hockey with your friends on Thursday night. And like, yeah, it's obviously, you know, adrenaline and cortisol during that hockey game while you're playing. But the entire thing is actually really great for you in general. It's really great for social. your mental health. You're social. You're being out in the world. Yeah. Um, so what can we do to kind of bring moments of relaxation into your life? Maybe it's like a hot bath for 20 minutes. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, reading a book. And then the other thing I was thinking about, uh, like you touched on, is passion. So how do we bring passion back into our business when we've been working so hard at it and we've run out of passion? Mm -hmm. For me, it looks at, I look at um, education. So what, oh, I'm really interested in fertility, functional medicine and fertility right now. Okay, let me find an online course. It's a few hundred dollars. Sure, let me sign up for this course and do it over the next few months and like get the wheels turning again of what it means to practice and what the woman, like what a female body looks like through this lens and kind of just bringing a new perspective. And so maybe it's not a course, maybe it's a book, but I do think that passion needs to be fed or it does, the flame does die, like you said. 
I agree. It's not anything. If you don't, a plant doesn't grow without water, without sunlight, right? Our our passion doesn't grow unless we're feeding it, you know, fueling it. Yeah. Um, and that inspires, like, around other people that are leveling up. That's why I love mastermind groups, because you see everybody who's like, there some people in that group are ahead of you, some are behind you, and it's not even really ahead or behind. It's just different parts of their life they may be ahead. Like, maybe you're the person that is... Um, the workaholic, the, you know, 10 out of 10 on your scale. And someone might be like, I really admire that about Mike. Like that dude is just on or whatever. But then sleep, this guy's sleeping nine to six every day. And I'm like, I, I don't sleep at all. Right. So yeah. there's going to be different things. But I feel like when we get around people that can inspire us too, and, and really help each other, like if we're ahead of someone, it's all about helping them level up. And if we're behind, I know so many mentors that have mentored me over the last couple of years. Some have done free sessions just to help out. I've done a bunch of paid sessions. And the whole idea is just to, to help bring you bring you up to where you're, we said the word earlier, optimal, optimal yeah. health, optimal lifestyle. Um, and that's really what I think the key is of this whole conversation is really to make your body, you know, function at its optimal ability. And um, yeah. information is important, but if you don't take action on the information, then it's just, Words on a page. Yeah, exactly. Or on, a, or on a screen with blue light hitting you in the face. <laughs> yeah. I think the, the best part about all of this is that you are actually in control. So you mm. actually get to decide how you show up every day. You get to decide, oh, I'm signing up for that hockey league. I'm getting a mentor. I'm going back to school. It's all up to you. So that that shouldn't scare you. That should be empowering of like, yeah, you might be burning out right now, but like, Let's make a change, and there is change that's possible. Mic drop moment right there from <laughs> Biohacking Brittany. That was awesome. A little sound bite right there at the end of the episode. This is a great interview, uh, great just to get to know you. I know we've talked a little bit um, via email, but you don't really get to know somebody. Um, I had the, the privilege of working on that episode that you were on, so I knew a lot more about you than you did probably me. Uh, this is a lot of fun for me and educational. And I know our audience is going to take a lot away from this. Um, you know, I have one more question for you, and I know that we're going to wrap up here. But okay. imagine this. So you're the author and protagonist in your own life story. And God willing, you continue to live a long, prosperous, healthy life, right? You're looking back on it, and you're reflecting, and you get to define your legacy. What would that be? Oh, big one there at the end. Define my legacy? Yeah. Oh, I feel like... I want to empower women to be holistically healthier. But my other part of me also says that I, my legacy would also just be like having a family of my own and teaching them to be healthier. And like mm -hmm. the personal side of me just almost would be just as happy doing that of like raising super healthy kids so that they can go on and like teach other people to be healthier as well. I love that. I love that because, you know, whether it's one person that you help out or a million, yeah. there's no, you know, added value. I mean, especially if we're talking about family, I think that's a beautiful um, vision that you have and legacy thought that you have is family first. And then from there, if more people, um, it, it's going to yeah. be kind of bonus, right? Um, I think that's a great answer. And, you know, the thing is, you're already doing it. And that's why I love, I love that answer at the end, that question at the end, because a lot of times when I get to know someone for 60 minutes. I'm like, she's already doing it. She's already <laughs> building this. Whether you admit it, know it, or are consciously thinking about it, like you're doing this already. You're building a beautiful legacy for yourself and for your future family. And so I'm sending much love to you um, and your community and continue to do what you're doing because um, I always end the episode saying this, be great and you're being great in everything you do. And then also be grateful. And I want you to know I'm grateful for your time and energy today just having you on the, on the program and grateful for everything you're doing. Thank you for being with us today. Amazing. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. This was great. And I, yeah, I just love this. Yeah, it was awesome. Thank you so much. Bye.